How is geothermal energy harvested? According to NBC News, geothermal power plants now generate about half a percent of the electricity used in the US, which is the world's leading producer of geothermal electricity. In California, along the geothermally rich region known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, geothermal plants now provide more than 5% of the state's electricity. Geothermal energy is a clean, sustainable renewable energy source generated and stored within the Earth. I discussed what it is and how it originates at length in the last video in this series. I'm going to link it in the description box below. In this part, I'm going to discuss how geothermal energy is harnessed for its two main uses, heating and the generation of electricity. So how is geothermal energy harvested? While geothermal energy occasionally makes its way to the Earth's surface in the form of geysers and volcanoes, among other things, most of it remains below the ground. Two broad categories of methods exist to harvest it. Those that harvest it for heating and those that do it for generating electricity. While some of these methods might occasionally be used to do both, generally, methods that harvest the energy for heating tend to leverage lower temperatures closer to the surface of the Earth, while those that harvest the energy for the generation of electricity try to go much deeper to tap into significantly higher temperatures before they can be efficient sources for electricity generation. Let's start by looking at geothermal technologies that harvest the energy for heating purposes. First up, we have low temperature geothermal energy. 10,000 years ago, Native Americans gathered around naturally occurring hot springs to recuperate while in the 3rd century BC, scholars used a hot spring near the Lishan mountain in central China to keep warm. Geothermal energy can be accessed and used immediately as a heat source, no matter where in the world you are. This is called low temperature geothermal energy and is obtained from pockets of heat that have a temperature of around 150 degrees Celsius. These pockets lie only a few meters below the ground. Low temperature geothermal energy is typically only used for direct heating purposes in homes, fisheries, greenhouses and industry as it is not an efficient source of energy for the generation of electricity. One of the most famous examples of low temperature geothermal energy perhaps is Bath, England. It was founded by Romans who used the natural hot springs as a thermal spa in the 1st century AD. It developed into a spa city in the 18th century under the reigns of George 1, 2 and 3. Chaudaigues in France is another town famous for the hot springs there have been a source of income and energy for the people of the town since the 1300s. In the US, the first district heating system they used geothermal energy was set up in 1892 in Boise, Idaho and still heats around 450 homes. Second up, we have co-produced geothermal energy. This makes use of water that has been heated as a byproduct from oil and gas wells. In the US, the oil and gas industry produces 25 billion barrels of hot water annually. In the past, this was wasted. Recently, however, its steam has been used for electricity generation purposes. At present, researchers are working on developing portable co-produced geothermal energy facilities. While presently experimental, these hold tremendous potential for the future. Third, we have geothermal heat pumps. These make use of the fact that the temperature of the ground beneath our feet below frost line remains relatively constant no matter where we are and what time of the year it is. This ground temperature tends to be warmer than the air above it in winter and cooler than it in summer. GHPs take advantage of this fact to warm homes in winter and cool them in summer. They work by using a ground heat exchanger to exchange heat with the earth. A pipe is arranged in a continuous loop and circles through the ground down to a depth between 3 and 90 meters and through the building that it's meant to heat or cool. Water or water mixed with antifreeze circulates through the pipe. In winter, it absorbs heat from the ground and carries the heat upward to warm homes and buildings, while in summer, it does the opposite. The overall efficiency and effectiveness of geothermal heat pumps varies depending on where you're located and how they're constructed. Nevertheless, they can significantly help lower your energy costs, even if you require additional heating or cooling systems in conjunction with them for full effectiveness. They're also renewable and green and help lower your environmental footprint. According to National Geographic, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has called geothermal heating the most energy efficient and environmentally safe heating and cooling system. The largest GHP system was completed in 2012 at Ball State University in Indiana. The system replaced a coal-fired boiler system and experts estimate that the university will save about $2 million a year in heating costs. On to geothermal energy for electricity generation. While the technical details of geothermal power plants vary, most of them tend to draw heat from wells drilled to depths ranging from 500 feet to 2 miles. They also have similar skeletal structures. Steam and hot water rise to the surface to turn turbines, 
through production wells while wastewater is captured and returned to the ground through injection wells. What follows is a quick overview of the main types of geothermal power plants. Number 1. Dry steam power plants Dry steam power plants were the first ever kind of power plants constructed to generate electricity using geothermal energy. The first one was constructed in Larderello, Italy in 1911, and dry steam plants continue to supply the energy of more than a million residents in the area today. Dry steam power plants take advantage of underground pockets of steam. This steam is piped to a power plant where it turns turbines used to generate electricity. 2. Flash steam power plants These are the most common types of geothermal plants and the single largest geothermal power plant in the world is a flash steam plant in the Philippines. Like dry steam power plants, flash steam plants also leverage naturally occurring sources of underground hot water and steam. Water that has a temperature greater than 182 degrees Celsius is pumped into an area with low pressure where it rapidly converts to steam which is then used to turn turbines and generate electricity. Any water that remains is usually flashed again in a separate tank to extricate more energy. Binary cycle power plants. These employ an innovative system that generates electricity while preserving water. They're different from all the systems already described in that they're designed to operate at lower temperatures than other geothermal power plants used for electricity generation purposes. The energy they produce is clean and their only emission is steam. Here's how they work. Hot subterranean water that has a temperature between 107 and 182 degrees Celsius is piped above ground where it is used to heat an organic compound with a lower boiling point. The organic liquid vaporizes and the vapor is used to drive turbines for electricity generation. Used water is piped back into the earth where it heats up again and can be reused in a virtually infinite cycle. Advanced geothermal systems are a special type of binary cycle power plant that leverage a closed roof. That is, the injection and the production wells are connected underground. Closed loop systems have existed for many years. Recently, however, they've been amped up with technology from the oil and gas industry. An example of a company that's specializing in building scalable closed loop geothermal systems is Ever, an enterprise started by investors from oil and gas. Enhanced geothermal systems. All of the geothermal power plants described above rely on pockets of water or steam beneath the surface of the earth and don't work in areas that are not hydrothermal. If you dig deep enough anywhere in the world, however, you will eventually encounter high temperatures, but the same unfortunately can't be said about water. Enhanced geothermal systems are designed to operate in areas that are dry. They use drilling, fracturing and fluid injections to create moisture and permeability in areas with hot, dry underground rock. To develop an EGS, a vertical injection well is drilled into the ground. Its depth varies depending on the geology of the area and may be as shallow as 1 km or as deep as 4.5. Cold water is injected into the well at high pressure. This causes the rock to fracture and causes existing fractures in the rock to expand, resulting in a reservoir of underground fluid. This fluid absorbs the heat of the rock surrounding it and heats up. The hot water is then pumped back to the surface through a production well and is used to heat a secondary fluid that has a lower boiling point than water. This fluid vaporizes and the resulting vapor is used to turn electricity generating turbines while the water is pumped back down through the injection well to be heated once more so that the cycle can go on indefinitely. I'll discuss the pros and cons of geothermal systems at length in my next video. However, it is still worth mentioning that EGSs can be risky and have been associated with seismic activity. In other words, they've been associated with earthquakes on more than one occasion. In Basel, Switzerland, the injection of water for an EGS caused hundreds of small earthquakes that grew in severity even after the injections of water into the ground were suspended, and consequently the project was cancelled in 2009. That's a wrap on the different types of geothermal systems that exist today. If you enjoyed this, please do subscribe to be notified when we post our next video on the pros and cons of geothermal energy. Don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Until next time, keep well, goodbye.